her vocal style was so i mean like none other like in my in my mind there's no better female vocalist than mariah carey and the music was so accessible back then because i was like i'm gonna date myself which is crazy because my birthday's tomorrow i'm i'm just gonna tell you right now i'm, I'm gonna be 42 years old and it was like the late 80s and early 90s whenever she got really popular and they had those cd deals you could get where you could um send in and get like 10 cds for a dollar like columbia house music bmg music and they would just mail you the cds and like you just ha had to pay later or i don't even know how they gave away all these cds and but that was where like my love for music came because it was like just my meditation that was like my time to like just really identify with myself and really feel the feelings you know i think every musician has that you know in them where they really connect with music and that was always mariah carey and you know there's a lot of other influences that i have um artists like jewel um singers and songwriters even the old ones my mom i grew up listening to carol king i grew up listening to james taylor and i grew up listening to don henley the eagles like lots of like catchy rock ballads and that's kind of like the type of show i do i do um hit music but also variety music because like I have a lot of varieties of, of influence. Um, my dogs, I was hoping they might make an appearance, but they're being good. They're staying in their cages and walking around. But yeah, <laughs> my influences were just basically anybody, any music I had access to. And now, you know, as you get older, that constantly just keeps building. And it just, it just kind of helps you decide who you are as an artist, you, you know, like, the things that really stick with you and like really you like you want to emulate they just become um part of your own personal style and you know we all have our limitations and we all have our preferences and you know it just comes out just like your personality like when you're a child is developing when an artist develops you know the same sort of thing happens and lately some of my influences have been like pink i i was i always liked pink but like she's really also herself like evolved a lot as an artist so she um is a huge influence on me now um recently i've been listening to a lot more r b artists i got into a band um with some people that were into like a lot more r b music of course i was already into a lot of mainstream artists like alicia keys but you know other people spoke to me to some other artists that i really got into like jill scott and um Sweet. who else janelle monet just some amazing songwriters that just have so much soul and so much creativity and freedom behind their expression it, like really shows you what is possible and it get you know every time someone comes out with something that's different it gives you permission to do the same thing so i i'm really enjoying like listening to even um i'm always enjoying listening to pittsburgh artists you know too like annie may the you know soul songstress i love her too <laughs> which that's you <laughs> but i love listening to the local artists too and that's one of the challenges you know as a musician and a musical artist is finding time to, you know, also dabble in what's going on in the music scene other than your own, what you are trying to accomplish. You know, it's a full-time job. You know that. Okay, okay. Now you play the guitar, correct? Yes, I do. And who are you, who uh, influenced you most on the guitar? Well, I have to be honest. I never like played the guitar to um, be a guitarist. My goal when I picked up the guitar was I'm gonna learn enough 
songs and get through them in whatever style I can pull off so that I can build a show and I can get out there and I can sing. And okay, at the time I was a very big Dave Matthews band fan and I still am. I just went and saw him um, June 25th at uh, there, it's called Star Lake again. And um, his guitar playing is beautiful. It's rhythmic, but it's also, he gets a little funky. I try to do that with my, my music and with all of my covers. I try to be artistic, rhythmic, and like a little bit of like soul and funk in there if I can, if it's appropriate. Um, as far as like country guitar and uh, you know, rock guitar, I, cause Dave Matthews is more of like an alternative rock. Um, I would listen to Jewel, she's a great guitarist. Um, I would also listen to bands like the Eagles and Kansas and a lot of the classic rock styles like to, um, because I love to cover the music, everybody knows it. So um, listening to it, it obviously, it influenced me. I grew up listening to it too. So um, yeah, I have a really wide variety of musical influences there too. Sweet. Oh man, oh man. So um what is your what is your creative process like when you're creating a song? What is your creative process? Well, I mean you just get that feeling inside like that you gotta write something. And um I've I mean I can't say I have like one process. I've written songs where I've had like all the lyrics down on paper. Like I've just like, they just pukes out of my brain. Like it was so inspired. And then I just write music that might go along with it. Like with the, the theme of the music. Like, is it gonna sound, you know, sad? Is it upbeat? Is it, uh, and then you, you, I just play around, you know, just play around with stuff. And you know, sometimes it'll happen a different way. Like I've written music where I've just been messing with the guitar and I've got a really good progression I want to use. And um, I write words to go over it. And most of the time I hate it. Like I hate it for a long time. Like I won't even play it live. I won't play it out for a long time because Something just doesn't seem like right about it. And slowly I'll share it with people or I'll just keep playing it over and over again and I'll change things. Or I put it down for a couple months or even a year and pick it back up. And all of a sudden I'm like, darn, that was a good song, you know? But it's fresh again. So you can hear it from through different ears in your mind. So songs can either like just be bam like right in front of you they already have a personality to them and some of them um it'll take years like for to write that song you know it'll be something you can't let go of because you love it but like there's just something missing you know and i've also had um creative processes where i'm like forced to do it like i've been um, and it's really fun. Like, which we should probably do that for fun sometime. Like just as like a group on Facebook or something, songwriting challenges. Like, um, one time at an open stage, Jimbo Jackson, of Jimbo Jackson in the Soup Browns, he gave us a challenge to write a song and he showed a picture and said, like, whatever evokes in your mind based on this picture, write a song about it and have it ready for this open stage, right? And we had like one week to write a song about this picture. And that's one of my best songs like that I've ever written. And I wrote that song within a week from front to back, knowing that I had to perform it at an open stage and just having that pressure and that deadline, like sometimes is the best way to be creative because you just drop the bullshit, you know? You just like, you stop 
being a baby about it. You stop like being indecisive. You say, this is the way it's going to be. This is what it sounds like. You know, oh well, oh well, like this is what I got and I'm gonna have to show what I got, you know? So that's good. And then I've also had songwriting jobs too, like being a songwriter. I've had songwriting jobs where uh, somebody gave me two, I've had two different songwriting jobs where someone gave me lyrics that they wanted to give to their significant other. One was a song that she was writing to her ex-boyfriend, who they were still friends, where she kind of messed up the relationship and she like wanted to make amends. And she wrote this song for him, but she wanted me to record it. Mm -hmm. So I had to take her lyrics and make them actually work and then put it in a song and record it. Cause it was, it was instead of being like, it's still my song, but it was a, a uh, it was hers. It was, she wrote the lyrics like, same thing with the one for someone's anniversary. And wow, those ones were completely different. It was almost like they had a different spirit about them because they had a different type of intention. Like, um, they were more, I don't wanna say it was like generic, but, but um, it was more, it wasn't as personal. So it was like a lot more easy for me because um, you know, it, it, it wasn't all me. Like whenever I was coming on here, I said I was nervous cause it's all me. Like, I don't know, like sometimes it's easier to do something that's not all you because really? you don't, you don't. And if you have a partner in it, like I've written music with other musicians too. Like I'm saying, there's so many different ways. Like it's like, there is no one creative process. So geez, that was a really long, <laughs> long answer. But, um, yeah, like inspiration can come from outside and it can come from inside. And um, I think the hardest part to do for me, which is like to actually take that time, you know, to do that creative process, it definitely needs, you know, space. It takes a lot of time, it takes a lot of energy. And um, that's why like part of the creative process is also nurturing yourself because you have to nurture your own energy. You have to nurture your own, um, even your own privacy and your own uh, personal time so that you can have that space to even be creative. If you don't have that, there is no room for the process. So um, out of all the things, like any, where you, any way you slice it, like the, the number one ingredient is, you know, space is like boundaries. And, and it's like, you know, you prioritizing your creative, your, your creative, uh, your creative space, including your time, but including like taking care of like getting enough rest, because if you don't sleep enough, your brain is not going to have the energy to do that and managing stress in your life. Like, and even eating healthy, you know, there's so many eating a clean diet, you know, getting exercise. Like these are all things that like, you know, actually help the creative process laughing, like having, getting in nature and laughing with your friends, like doing things just to be silly and just to exist, like just to be who you are, just to get a sense of what's, you know, what is essentially feeds your soul. That's why people, run towards creative people is because they just like thrive on that like that life experience on like really feeling life and really soaking it in and then you can then have something to give because i know like i get to the point where i can't create i've gone where i haven't created anything for years like years where i haven't written a, a damn thing like at all because i'm so worried about paying my bills getting enough sleep, keeping my house together, making sure my kids are still alive. Like, I mean, being creative is, it's, it's, um, it's a very tricky thing. Like, it's not something you can force. It's not something you can, it's not something you can just like be like, here I go, I'm gonna go do my creative process now. Like, no, it doesn't, it just doesn't work that way for me. Right. Hold on, give us a second. We're gonna. I gotta plug in my phone real quick. Wait a minute. We just go reposition this here. Okay. Oh, 
I got 53%. I actually have have a uh, decent battery for a change. It's 7 o'clock. Usually it's dead by now. Okay, okay. So, yeah. Um. So, how, how do you feel that social media has affected the music business aspect of everything? Okay. I would have <laughs> one. I wouldn't have as much... Uh, I can just talk about me because like I I don't consider myself like I say I'm a I'm a working musician but this is it's not my only job I I wish it was mm -hmm. but I needed health insurance for my kids you know so I'm a union worker and um, so I work really regular hours so that allows me to know that I'm always free in the evening you know so I can always do gigs in the evenings and weekends mostly but. The business part with the social media, it's get, it send positive things for it and negative things. The positive is that people will share with this person a video of me and then I could just get booked like so easy. You can create and promote yourself um, across um, many different avenues. Um, I think people get confused about um, what it can do. Like, I think people mm -hmm. people get confused when they think that you can just post on your page and that people are actually going to see it. Um, people get confused and they like do uh, they do too much. Or they lose they lose the audience because they get too personal. Like me personally, I get crazy personal. I've lost people that way, you know. Like it can be kind of like tricky because you want to be like you want to be like totally transparent because you want to attract people to who you really are. You don't want to mm -hmm. be in your life. Me personally, like the music business is more of um, it's more of like a personal branding. Like you can right. do a personal brand, like, um, but the social media part, it's not like people aren't going to cling to you because you post a lot. Like you have to have quality material. And so I don't post a lot of videos of me playing, first of all, because I don't have quality videos. I will throw them out there sometimes, like once every couple months I'll do a live because people want to see it. And sometimes some people really enjoy it, but I would never use that to market myself. Um, so doing a lot on social media doesn't really have much of an impact unless like you have a real purpose behind it. Like you have to, um, for me personally, um, you do you do it from like a personal mission standpoint like my personal mission is to bring a sense of like unity a sense of uh empowerment like for women and for people like who basically feel lost and ba and damaged you know by our our culture and um just by the way we didn't we never had control over um what types of standards were given to us like for me wanting to be a musician and this is this is like this is some real shit so like let me tell you if I can say that I mean this is just like I have to say that because like the media has harmed and this includes like music has harmed like people like it because for me in in our culture you think as a woman you have to be like a sex symbol to have any type of success yeah. um, and a lot of the music that's been marketed to our youth has been about like drinking being promiscuous um spending your money carelessly just all kind violence like all types of things that really lead to trouble like and and Right. Um, I was struggling hard, like really hard as a young musician, as a young mom trying to find my way. And so now 
like social media, the negative is, well, it can dilute, like it can be very diluted. It can be like, it's hard to get attention. It's very hard on social media because building a brand is like a really long process. It takes a long time. Um, but if the positive thing is like, if you stick with it and if you keep on being clear about with yourself, about what mm -hmm. your brand is and what you want to represent and the type of people you're trying to attract to you, eventually those people are going to find you and they're going to spread your message and they're going to spread your music because they're spreading your message and they're going to just vibe with you in that way. And so when you do hit that sweet spot, um, social media can be a very like powerful tool for cultural change. And it can be a powerful tool just for musicians, like to build audience, but also to like really use it as a testing ground, like to see like, and to constantly be changing your brand, like just because you can see how people respond to one message and one style of how you present yourself. And like, it's almost like, um, it's, it's almost like, I don't know, like if, if you have a bakery, it's like the back kitchen area, like, and people get to see like the bad, they get to see the ugly, you know, right. the, the, you know, they get to see all that stuff. And then, so that's like my personal page where all my friends are there. Right. And then I got my music page where in my fans page where I only post the stuff that's really, really relevant and, um, but yeah, social media is a, it's a jungle. It's just a jungle. The music business. Yeah. The music business is different forever. I mean, you can be discovered from your couch. You can be discovered from your church. You can be discovered from, you know, whatever. Like you don't have to. You, all the power no longer belongs to a few big record companies that are distrib distributing the music on like clear channel radio that owns like almost all the radio stations and you know a few big record companies i think that there's going to be a lot more variety uh, in music and people are really like it's harder for them it's harder for them to make money it's harder for the the big companies to really like keep their audiences centralized i mean taylor mm -hmm. swift is like an anomaly i mean she's amazing like I, she's blowing up i think i think that um and, and another way um since you know women have been getting more powerful in in the larger music scene i mean you, you can just see that there's more women like who feel like, oh yeah, I can do that too. I can be, I can be a guitarist and sing. I can, I can write music and play. Because if you look into the country music, and I know I'm going on a tangent, but if you look into country music, like back when I was growing up, these women, um, they were everybody was just produced. Like they were, they were part of a record deal where they, they put. Um, the songs together, they bought the songs from songwriters. They, mm -hmm. you know, it's the singer songwriter, you know, era. Like people are, it's not just like artists that are being signed. It's like the singer songwriter is what people want now. They want, cause people really connect with that. They connect with like your story, like who you are, what you, you know, what you came from. And who knows, like, who knows how many like new types of artists are going to emerge from this, you know, like we have so many amazing things coming in music, I think, because of social media. Definitely. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful answer. I was, <laughs> <laughs> yes. It's really that inspiring, was. but it's like kind of like overwhelming, but it's inspiring, like at the same time. Yes, definitely. I'm, like trying, to, I'm trying to adjust my camera because like my, I'm going to point it out right now. My blind's broken. My cat broke my blind. I'm like, <laughs> oh no, I look like I live in like some, that's all right. That's fine. We got broken blinds up in this house, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> now I noticed that you, uh, 
you play all over the place, West Virginia, Ohio, Pennsylvania. Um, what would be uh, your the venue that you would most like to play? Well, when I first started playing, I said, like, oh, I, I will consider myself made it when I get to play at Hartwood Acres, because I grew up in um, the North Hills. Um, we grew up in West Deer, and then we moved to Hampton Township, and we were, like, the poorest family. Everyone thought I was a witch. Like, nobody, like, would talk to me, <laughs> except the nerds. But, um, which I love them. That's why I'm such a nerd. But anyways, I am so... Like, I was so, like, obsessed with the concerts at Hartwood Acres. Like, they had amazing artists that came through. They had John Prine. They had Shaka Khan came in there. Like, amazing songwriters would come through there. I mean, so I... I looked at the schedule this year, and it wasn't, like, that great. I mean, they had um, some good ones, but nobody that I was like, I gotta see that one. But... Um, but go go check it out anyways. I'm not trying to diss them. But I mean, I would love to play at Hartwood Acres. It's just, it would be so nostalgic because I've been in the audience so many times. They do the free concerts there. Um, but you know what? Like, I never like really had any other goals in mind as far as like where to play. I always... As a young girl, I always fantasized about, you know, anybody in the music would. You watch the videos of these giant concerts with thousands yes. of people there, and you like just Woodstock. think like, oh yeah, man, you get that right. feeling in your stomach, <laughs> like where you're just like, you already, see, you already feel yourself like that. I'm already there. Like I can feel what it would feel like to be in front of that many people, you know. And just be like sick to your stomach, nervous and excited. But yes. you, once you get to that point, you've earned it so much because you've put in so much blood, sweat, and tears, and so much work to get there that there's no way you're gonna drop the ball. There's no way that you're gonna do. You're gonna put on a bomb ass concert. You're the best you've ever been. Yes. And I know that, like, that is my dream. Like, just, I don't know what venue it is, but just to get that to that point. And the reason why I, I know that that's my goal is because I wrote my first song ever when I decided I'm, I'm going to try to do this. I'm trying to do the music thing. And I picked up my guitar and I wrote this song. I thought it was the bomb. I played it for my sister and her uh, husband. And they might have just been engaged or boyfriend and girlfriend. I think they just got married. And they were like, he was like, yeah, I could definitely hear that at a coffee house. And I was like, coffee house? <laughs> I was like, I was thinking of a football stadium or something, you know? Like, right? I was like, I had a different vision, you know, for my music. Like, I wanted, I was like seeing everyone like rocking out to it. And, but in my mind, it's blown up. Like, I've got background singers. I've got a horn section. Yes. The whole band. <laughs> and it's like, it's a stadium. It's like all these people. It's not just the coffee house. So like, right. <laughs> I don't care where it is, like what state it's in. I don't care what it is. I just want to be, I just want to make it there. You know, I want to make it to where right. I do, I belong on that stage where I'm, I'm invited to play somewhere. That oh, last, yeah, last yeah, second for a minute. Okay, oh, we back. We, yeah. we had a we had an earthquake. Yeah, well, uh, that's well, an earthquake. Yeah, I know. I'm like uh, I got a concussion. Let's think about chargings and technical things. Oh yes, I'm not good at the technology yeah, part, man. Listen, there I'm just go. amazed. I'm like, wow. Oh man. Yeah, but I that. think, yeah. I heard my name. Okay, we're here. We're here. We ain't going nowhere. Okay. Was that Signal still good? Okay, okay. Yes. So do you have any upcoming projects that you're working on? I'm dying well, to know I'm, because I'm like... My project number one is like tomorrow, the 4th of July. You know, it's, it's going to be a relaxing day. And it's Woo! my birthday. But... Oh, oh, happy birthday. birthday. Thanks. Like I said, I'm gonna be you're, 42. You're a cancer? 
Yeah. I'm See your cancer. cancer. Oh, oh, oh and then we are waiting. What'd you say, hon? I said, I, the way is, I had to think about it. I thought it was, I'm like, no, you're a Leo. <laughs> yeah. My birthday's the 20. I'm 20 days after you. And Nairobi's is the 21st. <laughs> yeah. Oh, wow. Yes. Yeah, but yeah, tell me about your upcoming, yeah, what you're working this on at the weekend, moment. And my, my big project is I'm putting stuff together for a friend. His name is Charlie Doyle. He has autism. And he, you know, of course, he's he's pretty well functioning, but you know, he always wanted to fit in with people, and he got bullied a lot. And him now as an adult, he feels like there should be more things like for people with disabilities to yes. support one another and to feel like socially included and to feel like they have support and that they actually have fun, can have fun. Uh -huh. So yes. um, he, he's starting a charitable organization called Active and Autistic. And people get confused and think it's just for autism, but it's for all disabilities. But we're having a benefit concert um, in Homestead in your, uh, your area at the Forge Urban Winery on Saturday from four to eight. And um, so I'm really working on like some non-music things for that project. Like I'm, I'm gathering stuff for the Chinese auction. I just picked up some homemade uh, soy and beeswax candles. They're freshly made from a, a local in Pittsburgh. Um, we just started a candle company. Charlie got a um, signed. Um, I think it's lithographed. I don't. I think that's what it's called. It's not actually his physical signature, but it's like it's like an official lithograph signature of Cameron Hayward. A picture Ooh. from the Steelers sending that to him. Um, we've just got a lot of different things we're putting together for the Chinese auction and just organizing the music and everything for that. So that's gonna be awesome. And then. Um, have my birthday party, you know, at the at the marina in Verona, it's called Marina ten point seven on Friday. Oh, That's gonna be from six to nine. I'll have a I'll have a cake, cake for everybody. <laughs> and okay, okay. yeah, like my projects are just um, my main project right now is just being the best you, you know performer I can be, and putting together a good show, you know, for everyone who comes to see me playing the music they love to, to hear and um, just keeping up on, you know, my originals, like keeping them fresh and keep on playing them out so people can get to, you know, know them and, and hear them. Like that's, that's um, my only project is ser serving the music, the music um, economy in Pittsburgh, because Pittsburgh, believe it or not, um, is a city, it might be a sports city, but it is about to be a music city, you know. Um, Pittsburgh recognizes that we have great music talent. They're always trying to recruit music talent. Um, you do have to like really keep an open mind and, and keep looking and keep yourself out there. Like I've been doing music for shoot 2007, 16 years. And for the first time ever, somebody sent me, I didn't, I didn't even know this existed, an application to sing music at the airport, which they haven't called me yet. Ooh. But what I'm saying is like, the Pitt, city of Pittsburgh, they want they want when people land on a plane to hear music from local musicians. Like the first thing they hear when they see when they get off the airplane, you know, there's all kinds, kinds of things like that going on. So just like, and even whenever like places like, um, I played the field house in Cabot, I'm about to start a residency at the Forge, and I need to find out what they're going to call that because that's going to be on Fridays um, before their evening show. They're going to do like an early evening show. It's going to be me like every single week so that they can, people who come in, they know that, that 
what they're going to hear. They know what, what type of show they're going to. Because they don't want people to not know what they're walking into. And a lot of these places, they want to build, like, they want to build a culture of people knowing what they're going to walk into. Just like when you walk into a jazz speakeasy, you know that you're going to be able to relax with a glass of wine and you're not going to have to scream to talk over the music. You're going to hear some nice soft jazz stuff. And, you know, certain nights, you know, it's like going to be like a, a jam, like where it's like funky and crazy rock and roll. You know, different venues have different types of music. Like even our venues are trying to figure this out, you know. And so as a musician, um, you have to uh, just kind of find that. You just got you have to find your niche. You have to find where you fit, you know, and just keep on going out. And getting in those places because like it's not like you're 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 it's not like you're uh you know begging to play like these places like they need they need they need they need these entertainers like this is like a, it's a high purpose like and so like i know me saying like oh coffee house like i i don't want my music in a coffee house i guess not true i was just saying like that's not my grand vision like you um you help like we help the music musicians help the business owners we help the the city as a whole like in its image you know what we stand for and um my biggest project for me is just to figure out that you know just where can i best be a a uh, benefit you know to the musical economy like at this point for me i'm really doing great i'm thriving like big time doing the doing the little restaurant gigs and the outdoor fun patio gigs and the um you know the ones where it just people just want to come and they want to they want to hear songs that they that they like to tap their like their their knee to and sing along to and and like I'm not I'm not trying to um you know be the next um Ariana Grande or you know the next Alicia Keys or even the next uh Taylor Swift you know so my project for this year is to like really get 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 my name out there like for who I am, what I do, and then I maybe I can sell some music, you know? Once I have an audience, maybe I can sell some music. So um, my next goal after um, finishing out this really crazy busy season, I have 15 shows in July. That's like, that's like half the days I'm playing a show. I guess a lot of shows. like. I mean, after after I get out of this busy season, which I will, like I'm gonna slow down. I really want to, like, I've never recorded an album, like ever, like 16 years of playing music. So it has to happen. Um, yes, it has to happen by the end of 2024. I'm saying it right now. Like I've got one year, and even if the album has five songs on it, you know, or six, like it doesn't have to be like a giant album at least has to be some type of a, a release like it could be like an ep with like extended like tracks on it like i don't know what it's gonna be but i have 10 songs i have enough songs for an album easy you know and uh it's kind of ridiculous that i haven't done that yet so Awesome. That's up, man. Look, when you do work on an album, I want a copy so I can play it. Definitely play it on, you know, on the show. Yeah. You, know? you guys have been working on it, right? Oh yeah. <laughs> definitely. Yeah. Yes. That's no joke. That's a lot of energy goes into that. A lot. Does. Oh yeah. A lot of yeah. yeah. Studio work is hard. You, <laughs> you know my song. That is so sweaty. Music, and, yeah. I said definitely going in the studio is definitely yeah difficult. Um, so how um, what it, what is the best advice that you could give someone who is just starting as a musician in Pittsburgh? Just starting as a musician, like you don't. <laughs> 
I can only say what, like what it has worked for me. And um, when I first started, I just went to open stage after open stage. If you're just starting open stages, that's, that's where you, te- that's where you truly test your, your material out. That's where you really know, Hey, can I make it through this song live? Cause you can practice in your living room all you want. I mean, you can record yourself, you know, and do whole, whole takes of songs. If you can't get through a song recording it, you know, you, you probably need to practice more or take it to an open stage. So if you make a mistake, you have to learn how to fumble through it and, and actually not, not wreck the train, you know? So open stage is the first step. The second step is getting, um, getting on somebody's live show, um, like, you can either open for somebody, play on their break time. I've gotten a lot of gigs doing open stages and somebody hearing me and asking me to play at the venue where the open stage was or opening for other musicians and somebody asked for my card or I'll just drop off my card. If the owner's not there, I'll leave my card there. And then the bartender can say, hey, yeah, they were good. I, I, I listened to them play, they were good. Or, um, but when you first start, um, I'd say go and see other musicians. Like you can easily um, go on Facebook. This is one of the good things for music. Go on Facebook, join the, the music pages, like and see where people are playing. See what other artists are playing. Go out, like people that like are like you that like do what you want to do. Go see them play. Go see their show. Like start getting out in there. Get involved in the music scene. Like don't wait. Don't just sit at home and dream. Don't just uh, post videos of you playing the guitar on your couch. Like get out there and meet people because when you meet people, they're gonna remember you. Like people, and like the more people you talk to, the more opportunities will come in your direction. And I'm still getting opportunities from when I played at open stage at Club Cafe, which they do Acoustic Cafe now at Mr. Small's on Monday nights, which is probably going on now. I think they started seven. But people who went to that were like really professional type of musicians. And, you know, just watching them play and their style and how they developed their their performances how they took the stage how they ended their songs during a live performance it's the small details that kind of um give away your experience and your professionalism and uh, that's the parts that like how you enter how you carry yourself on stage like those are things that develop over time but if you watch musicians that do it have done it over time you can kind of like just kind of like i don't know like get it through osmosis just get it through like you kind of like you almost have to feel like you're acting you know you have to feel like you're you're playing a character when you go Definitely. up there you know you have to play that character because if you don't feel like that person that you, that you want to emulate as a musician as a live performer then you have to um pretend like you you literally have to like fake it until you make it and um but the other number one piece of advice that i would say is um don't get discouraged like don't take bad shows as because we're real sensitive like super sensitive it's, we take it personally. It's connected to like our dreams. It's connected to our soul. If somebody yeah. says, "Oh, I've heard better," which I, or how do you like the show? Oh, uh, I've gotten this. It, it was interesting. Like your voice is it's interesting. You know, like you don't know where some you don't know where somebody's coming from. Like they could like just really maybe like their boyfriend was looking at you or something and they were jealous. Like, you just don't know what <laughs> kind of stuff is coming from. Yeah. Like, you don't know, like you can't, you yeah. can't take something someone said and let it like go around in your head over and over again and like be like, make you sick to your stomach and I, I don't want to do this anymore, you know? Like the more that you like, like you just really got to find 
the positive things and really focus on them. I'm not saying don't listen to criticism because if somebody has an honest piece of criticism and it's a good criticism, like they'll come to you and they'll say, hey, listen, like there was way too much trouble. Like I felt like my ears were bleeding like at certain points of your show. Like, but it was really good. But you know, somebody gives you real right. criticism. You're just like, okay, I gotta tone that down, you know? Like soak that up, take the good criticism. But those bullshit, like cop out weird, like answers, like the people say, like some people just take <laughs> are jealous of you. <clears throat> people are jealous yeah. of the fact that you have the balls to get up there and do what you do and they right. don't like it. You know, there's mean people out there. I mean, and, and you can't be discouraged, but you can, you also have to listen for criticism you know and the best people are like other musicians like they will be more honest they really will um if you're if you're i don't know i feel like you just kind of have to you really have to earn it like you have to you have to work hard if you don't work hard um me personally like i've heard so many people talk and talk and talk about their music I've heard so many people talk about, you know, oh, I, I do this, I do that. I can get us a show here. I can get us, I know this person. You know, you hear all this stuff that people say, but so everybody in the music industry has already heard all the talk. So the only thing that talks is your performance and like your work ethic, work ethic right. you know? And you have to be not afraid of people. Like you, like if you got a problem, like, me, I had a drinking issue like for a long time because I was afraid to talk to people. I would just drink to get loose. Like, so I could socialize and have a good time and be that entertainer. But then I would say the wrong things or I would mess up or, I, you know, whatever. Or I would lose an important phone number. You know, I'd toxic. Like, find a way like to really be comfortable in your own skin, like a positive way so that you can like in order to network you have to talk to people like you have to have a level of self-confidence to talk to people and i really think that that self-confidence comes out of like you know me personally when i first started i would book every show i could i'm do i did what i'm doing now like i would book every show i could every opportunity i could and i could never um I could never feel like I like I don't deserve it. Like, put yourself in a position where you know you you deserve it. Like, where you know that you've worked hard. Where you know that you've you know done all this stuff, so that you can't um, you know you can walk up and say I played here, I played there. You know, la la. You have stuff to talk about. You've been places. Yeah. You've seen this person's show. Like, actually, get out and do stuff, and that that lends itself to the confidence too. But just like, um, you just have to keep on plugging at it, and don't get discouraged, and always be improving. Just always be improving. Know that you are not the artist that you're going to be. You are not me right now i'm not as good as i'm gonna be someday i'm not gonna be as seasoned i'm not gonna never i'm never gonna know less music i'm never gonna have less experience you're always gonna get better so like know that you have a bad show you mess up you um drop the ball like you every single month every single weekend every single week it's another opportunity like so just keep on doing it don't give up you know just don't give up because like i said the music industry needs needs seasoned performers who have that attitude like that yes. they're there to serve and they're there to you know network and they're there because the more people you know too like say you you have a show and oh crap you know um my grandma's in the hospital i have to you know i can't do this show this week and i have to be with my family you you need a, you need a support network of other musicians around you like so they can take your gigs for you so they can you know rally around you because this is a very tight-knit community and like i said they don't just people don't just give and help people they don't know 
They just don't. The reason is not because they they don't like you because they don't know you. It's because we've been scammed. We've been embarrassed by putting our name out. And I'm just saying that from a personal standpoint, like I put my name out for somebody and they like did a crappy job. Like they showed up late. They didn't, they didn't promote the show. They didn't do what they were supposed to do. Like, so you can't, you can't expect like for somebody to help you when you haven't shown that you're willing to put in the work first. Like you have to show who you are by your actions, not just by what you have to say and not by, Oh, look at this pretty picture of me. Like, I'm, I'm a musician. Like people need to see. They need to see yeah. it. They need to see your heart from what you do, not from what you say. You know. Right. And then the networking happens when people start to know you. But you have to be out there. You have to go to open stages. Like you won't meet too many super duper like connected musicians at like your local bar open stage. I'm gonna say you want to go to the ones like um, you could go to the ones that you see other like. Uh, like really good musicians like hosting where people are getting together like the long time running jams like um there's one down in what's it called the r bar on wednesdays acoustic yeah. cafe on mondays um there's a lot of different good ones the one of the forge is really good because that one's plug and play everybody knows there's a full band set up so you never know who's going to walk into the one in the forge on thursday like there's a lot of different good open stages, but you just have to keep your eyes open. And that's another way that social media is changing too, is that you can really like, you can see a lot on social media about what's going on. So you like really have no excuse. Like it eliminates all the excuses. Like you have no excuse. Like I didn't know. Oh crap, hey, my phone just died. Oh my goodness. Hey, you want the car? Is it dead? I don't know, I still see you. I don't have a number. Oh, her Facebook. You know that 